Well, this is it. We're here, day one. We're about to kick off on the Jigsaw Grand Tour of Ireland. Absolutely honoured and delighted to be here. Weather guards are playing ball. There's a great turnout behind us. Nova Radio are broadcasting live from inside the showroom there. Nicky Byrne of Westlife fame has just turned up as well. <laughs> so, so I'll tell you what, we're all going to be flying without wings in the next half an hour or so. Can't wait for the kickoff. Tune in after the sting. people aged 12 to 25. We've just been chatting to Neve, Neve Fennell uh, from the charity and um, on the course of the conversation we were talking about the stuff um, you know that's on the website jigsaw.a if you want to go and check it out or if you want to donate of course that would be great too um, in relation to you know little tips and things about you know if you were struggling with that anxiety or anything yeah, like that. Right? Just a bit of stress even yeah. And the thing to bear in mind is that that charity know what they're talking about. I was nervous there the last few days but I'm really looking forward to now today. It's going to be great. Great support here with Nikki and the lads and PJ and Jim Jim from Nova and the BMW team, so and the Garda Escort. It's going to be a great day. If this sets the standard before we've even got on a motorbike, I think we're in uh, the lap of the gods, aren't we? I think we're going to have a great weekend. A great few days we're going to have. So looking forward to it. Keep the sugar rush going. Mm. Be wore off by about 11. Please start cooking. Mm. Beautiful. How often are we going to stop for pastries, do you think, over the weekend? I'll say it'd be 45 minutes. <laughs> stop, stop, stop. That's yes. Hang on. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the checkpoint. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to try and get a top. We've we'll got to try and get the topless shot before we kick off. That's it, yeah. How are you feeling about today? Yeah, I'm not double really good. Go. The nerves were a bit gone this morning. Make sure everything was uh, kind of in plan to the point where I walked off my own motorbike white gloves. And, uh, but the brother had a spare oh, set in no, his bag, so it's grand. Like, somebody it's always has a backup plan for you. But look, if anything's not ready at this stage, it's not worth worrying about. We're here now, we're going on the road, and we're going to have a good time and a safe journey around the country. Great atmosphere this morning. Ah, great atmosphere this morning. Delighted to have Nicky Bourne show his face. Really decent to come out. And, uh, you know, we, we've radio on over broadcasting. It's a good bunch of lads. We've got the guards to give us an escort. Like, what more could we really ask for? Like, a lot of planning goes into this, David. Uh, I'm months and months and months doing this now at this stage. Uh, I think I think I'm about three months at it. Like you know, when it's when I said I was going to do it, it was probably even a month before that. Before I had it in my head, but I just didn't want to say it to my wife yet because she was like, "Oh, not again!" Like. Well, we're just getting ready to uh, take off. It feels like we're going to take off. Um, because it's uh, military precision, this uh, operation. What an atmosphere here. This is just brilliant. Um, well, there's definitely more than seven bikes, so <laughs> I don't quite know what's going on. Maybe there's a few guys that are just riding with us on the Dublin leg. We've got Nova Radio here who are broadcasting live. I think they're actually going to broadcast as we send off. So what a spectacular morning as well, weather-wise. Jeepers, everybody's in great spirits. We've got a guard our escort as well, just being briefed by the guards uh, because this morning we're riding mainly through Dublin city. Um, so obviously got to keep our wits about us. I'd say all the staff here from Joe Duffy's uh, BMW and Mini can't wait to see us gone so they can start doing a bit of business because <laughs> at the minute uh, we're just absolutely taking over their forecourt. And we're off! That's that PJ Gallagher there who just started us off. Um, he's one of the presenters on the radio show and uh, so he just led us out of the car park and uh, <laughs> left, left the rest of us to do the next 1500 kilometres. Good man, PJ. So the guards are accompanying us through Dublin this morning and then 
they're leaving us this afternoon for us to go ahead to Donegal. Some operation. Rush hour here uh, on the way into Dublin, so this is the only way to travel. <laughs> if only I could uh, get a guard or escort to uh, to work every morning like this. motorbikes coming up from everywhere Jeez. Talk about VIP treatment. I believe Ken, who was one of our uh, riders, who stepped in right at the last minute, he's a detective, and uh, he's organized the, uh, the Garda uh, Outriders. So thanks a million, Ken. That makes for an easy start with uh, treatment like this, I tell you. So we're riding two by two formation. I sound like I'm the uh, squadron leader of the Red Arrows, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Our first stop uh, is literally within minutes from here. I'll tell you more about the um, the charity and the cause and the route and uh, fill you in on a lot more details once we've got our uh, first uh, photo challenge stop out of the way. I'm deliberately holding back just so you can see the bikes in front of me. Got a, a real sense of uh, the operation. That must be great crack now, being a, a guard, a motorcycle cop. That must be great fun. A good dose of adrenaline every day, I would have thought. Okay, I'm settling in. Uh, Settling into the journey quite nicely now. There's always a little bit of uh, apprehension, a bit of anxiety, a bit of nerves going on, especially when you're riding out with a, a big bunch of other riders like this as well. So it literally is a, a very quick photo stop this. This is good to see the lie of the land with the first one. So the lovely ladies bringing out everything. You're well organized ladies. The guard, uh, one of the guard riders has just said uh, we need to stay 2v2 two two. Uh, and he's dead right, so a little bit of housekeeping. So um, I'll, I'll ride with somebody there. Yeah, that guy on the Africa twin. That's good. So we've got to stay 2v2 two two, but staggered slightly, just in case we have a, a, um, an opportunity for a runoff. God forbid something happens ahead of us. getting very hot wearing all of this gear. I even took the thermal liners out of my uh, jacket anyway. I still have them in the trousers, but I wasn't expecting this sort of heat. Might have to have a costume change before this afternoon's ride up to Donegal. I'll tell you what, we'll be uh, like synchronized swimmers by the end of these three days. The way we're uh, able to form these, uh, well, to design these formations outside of every uh, jigsaw centre in the country.
So this is it, stop two, we're in Tala, just outside of Dublin. And, uh, I mean, just look at the formation of the bikes. We're getting better every time, I think. <laughs> it's some atmosphere here, it really is brilliant. So a quick photograph here, onto step three, and so on. So I am sweating in all of this gear. But I think part of that is the adrenaline as well. It's just brilliant crack riding with these Garda Outriders. I know the lads are buzzing about it as well, so it's really great fun. So here we are, Jigsaw and Tala. <laughs> so now is a good time to tell you uh, a little bit about Jigsaw. Jigsaw has 17 hubs around uh, the country of Ireland and uh, they're very much an early intervention charity for anybody uh, well of a younger age who might be suffering with a mental health. Um, an, an incredible charity, an incredible cause. There's 250 people working for Jigsaw. Um, so as well as the hub where you can drop into, um, uh, there are, you can have one-to-one -one Zoom calls as well as phone calls. Hugely important charity. I remember back in my day, um, the stigma alone, you could never go to anybody, let alone try and find a place like Jigsaw for somebody to talk to, as well as um, raising funds for this charity uh, to raise awareness is uh, equally as important in my opinion and uh, help hopefully break down those barriers of stigma uh, attached to anybody who's suffering from depression all the way through to dare I say it suicidal tendencies um, vital charity It's been a long time coming, a long time in the plan, and Damien Sheridan, who's the organiser of all this, has literally spent months and months pulling all of this together. And, uh, well, as you can see by the operation this morning, so far, so good. Fair play, Damien. Can I just say a huge thank you as well to all of my uh, friends and uh, uh, subscribers on the channel who've uh, donated to the fund. I really appreciate it. I've raised uh, 1,200 euro, so uh, the threshold for each rider was 1,000 euro, so thank you so much for getting me over that threshold, and the funds get uh, um, uh, sent to Jigsaw, I think, uh, at the end of this ride. Uh, actually, I might be mistaken, I think there's another month left, so people can still donate after the ride is done, and then the funds get sent directly to Jigsaw, so really appreciate it. The people who work in these uh, outreach centres are hugely grateful for us uh, raising, well, not just the money, like I said, but the awareness as well. And uh, it's it's great to meet people who work in these centres as well, because uh, really they're they're the people who need to be applauded, not us. Oh wow, I took a few days off work so I could do this and um, it couldn't have come at a better time. This is, uh, I've often thought as well, you know, it's such a, a parallel universe for me because motorbiking and motorcycling, uh, however you refer to it, uh, uh, is my uh, therapy, if you like. And I know a lot of you who ride bikes feel the same. This is how I cope with any... Uh, stress or anxiety it's pure escapism on two wheels and uh, so the irony that we're raising funds for a youth mental health charity uh, by doing what i do to escape from from everyday life it's uh, it's very fitting let's just say that Unfortunately, we're uh, we're not on intercoms. We 
did have a little chat about it, but uh, with all of this uh, mesh technology, I think not everybody's intercom had the mesh technology, so we decided just to uh, leave the intercoms and uh, probably just as well because there's so much going on. Uh, like it's one less thing to to worry about if you like. Now I'm just gonna follow the group here. I don't know. We're getting let through the, the traffic. We're having a great time, loving the Garda Escort. And you tell me? It's absolutely thrilling. It's the best pose on two wheels I've had in years. Fantastic, can't believe it. Trying to ride uh, just like Noah's Ark, two by two and uh, slightly staggered. Yeah, the posh area of Dublin, if you hadn't already been able to see that. This is D4. Some beautiful properties down here. Talk about adrenaline. That's the only way to be led through the uh, city of Dublin, by the way. Great turnout wherever we go. People out with the, uh, the cameras. Tell me your name. Reese Marshall. Reese, and how uh, how far are you following us for, Reese? Reese, are you with us for the whole journey? I might go about three quarters of the way today. Maybe two quarters. See how it goes. Right. And how old are you? Do you, do you mind me asking? How old are you? Nineteen. Right. So, um, if you're nineteen, have you got something else going on in your life at the yeah, moment? Yeah, my leaving cert exams. I've the last one on tomorrow, <laughs> so I have to be home for that. Otherwise, I'd be out and I'd do the whole thing. So the day before, probably the most important exam of Reese's life, he's out uh, committing to this. I mean, that just says it all, if you ask me. <laughs> yeah, it's really good fun being out here doing this, and as well, it gives a bit of break from studying and stuff for the exams. Of course it does, yeah. Well, best of luck in your exams. Yeah, thanks. Pa well, thank you for joining us. All the best, buddy. Yeah. Lovely little bikes, those are threes. I don't know if you saw the review I did of one. It, uh, it actually changed my mind about Yamaha. I, I never got on with uh, with any Yamaha bike that I was riding <laughs> until I rode the R3. Absolutely loved that little bike. In fact, that's really condescending because I kept calling it a little bike on my review. I remember that now. Uh, and uh, certainly when you ride it, it doesn't feel like a little bike. I was super impressed with it. Really comfortable as well. Anyway, eyes on the road, Dave. I really like the design of the bibs that we've all been given. They're really nice. Hopefully I'll get to keep it and I don't have to hand it back uh, after this because uh, it's a, it's a well-designed high-vis vest. So we're right in the city centre now of Dublin. What a day! I really uh, do feel as though I'm at risk of repeating a lot of what I'm saying, but uh, we're all absolutely buzzing with adrenaline here. Uh, the guards are providing an amazing service to help us weave in and out of the uh, city centre traffic as well. I'm just looking out for us all. Now at the same time, we're having a quiet little word with a few of us as well. Um, just to keep us in line, so clearly they're, uh, they're not uh, just out to sort of help us weave through, they're actually doing their job as well. Now the formation that we were used to has broken up a little bit. I'm looking for the Africa twin. Can't see him. Now this road here which leads down onto the Dublin Keys, you can never get moved on it because the traffic is always crazy. Lovely RT to the right of me. The next time I'm stuck here in traffic, I shall remember this moment. In fair old city, Dublin is only beautiful.
there's not many people get to do this, folks. <laughs> So we've O'Connell Bridge there and O'Connell Street to the right of us. And the GPO up there on the left, you can't see it because of all the greenery. And there's the Hapenny Bridge ahead of us as well. I photographed that many a time. It seems surreal to be riding around the Dublin Keys like this. Well, if there was ever a moment where uh, I felt like a VIP on a motorcycle, this is it. I'm sure we all feel that. Certainly speaking to the lads every time we come to a stop, we all feel a bit like that. So grateful to the guards for this. We didn't travel far to this next one anyway. The old cobble streets, they weren't made for motorbikes. Follow the leader. Where's the Africa twin I was following? I liked having him as a reference. Oh no, the Africa twin I've just realised was a fella called John. He's gone. He's meeting us again on Saturday, so I'll try and keep that RT to the right of me. That was a, uh, another good reference. Oh, Tony there as well, that's good. I, lo I love that. Uh, the R80 GS, 1996 that is. We're in Temple Bar, I'm sure you've heard of that. This is where uh, all the fun is in Dublin. You'd never ever get this sort of access down the quays in Dublin, unless you were a member of Westlife actually, on your way to play uh, Crow Park. I know that <laughs> because uh, Many moons ago, I was with Nicky and the lads in the back of a minibus when, when they left the hotel to actually go and play Crow Park. I was making a, um, a film for them, for Westlife. And I thought that would be the one and only time I'd get a guard or a escort throughout the streets of Dublin in the back of the minibus with Westlife. So it's a bit weird that Nicky was there this morning and uh, now this is only the second time I've ever had a guard or escort through Dublin. Uh, but Nicky was still there this morning. What's that about? I always uh, read into things a, a bit deeper than I need to and think, uh, what does it mean? Another pavement stop. <laughs> Obviously, if someone is indicating with the hands left, right, and the old slow down movement, you remember that one just in case we're slowing down, do that for the, the, the guy behind. And yeah. listen, we're not in a hurry, we're ahead of time, yeah. so everybody just take a hand. Take it handy. Yeah, of course, yeah. tell me. <laughs> I did, I went there for a minute. And the front wheel has to be in contact with the chairman. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how that goes. I'm going to give you. I'm going me. Don't believe you. <laughs> And come here lads, uh, what's the hand signal for a bacon sandwich? <laughs> 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 afternoon so we will uh, get a 
a spot of lunch in us before we make that journey. I think it could be about uh, two and a half, three hours the journey this afternoon in one stretch. Unless we need a fuel stop, of course. Beautiful old Kawasaki here to the left of me, front left, 97. 1997. I think it's a 1400, isn't it? Beautiful bike. Well kept, holy God. Uh, the tire pressure is very low on the way. Think it could possibly have a puncher. Does it tell you if it's the front or the back? Well, that was down to 7 psi. Oh dear God. So, uh, let's just double check the back as well, boy, on there. Yeah. She's got a tube in her. If I can do anything for you, mate. Well, we have a puncher repair kit here. I'll just double check the wheel and see if there's any air coming from it. Okay. Uh, yeah, we have plugs in that here just in case. You know, we came prepared. These, these are the things that pop up as you're going along, Dave. So far, so good. So first incident, it turns out Damien has got a puncture. Looks like he's got it on the front tyre. Um, fortunately, he has a centre stand, so it's not a crisis. Uh, and like, there's a few of us carrying puncture repair kits as well. So as I said to Damien, all part of the adventure. <laughs> Capsule motor, Steve. You would think it'd be the other way around. Dave, are you getting this? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How are you feeling, Damien? A bit yeah. pissed off at the moment, if I'm yeah. to be honest. Blame it on Joe Duffy. At least it's not your boy, Damien. Anybody? Oh, you got this on. This is this is going to be the one, the only puncture. Please God. Hopefully. Yeah, yeah. Fingers crossed and please El, El, El God. El Capitan yeah. has taken one for the team. That's it. I think you've done it before though, Damien. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Do me, do me yeah, no, at least you're not using this. Yeah. It works, but we'll be here a while. <laughs> Thirsty work. Watch him. I do feel a bit of a joke coming on, but maybe it's not the best time to crack it. How many bikers does it take to fix a puncture? I maybe leave that one until later. <laughs> maybe it's tonight in the hotel bar. <laughs> Another stop, another modelling assignment. <laughs> Could get well used to this. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Go on, so. That's a nice bubbly reception for us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we've just arrived in Navan at the Jigsaw Hub in Navan. And a uh, very welcome lunch break as well. So we've supplied a load of sandwiches, ice creams, water. I mean, what more does a man want? Hold on. I've got, I can answer that, actually. Another three-hour ride on a motorbike this afternoon up to Donegal in this weather. Happy days. <laughs> Damien's puncture is holding as well, so that's good news. And now we're down to seven. So the other lads have left us and uh, Hopefully they're going to rejoin us. I think a couple of them are going to rejoin us on Saturday afternoon when we approach Dublin again. Um, so yeah, the Magnificent Seven, I think I'll call it. <laughs> you know, I was just thinking there uh, as we set off after lunch, 
If all of this fundraising and organising from Damien and um, all of the money which has come in as a result as well, if all of this just goes to save one life, then it's all been worthwhile. And not even save, like even to make somebody's life happier or better or make them rethink or restructure their lives, then it's all been worth it. And like I said earlier today, it's not about raising funds necessarily, it's, it's the awareness. For somebody to know who might be suffering with their mental health. And again, you know, Jigsaw really sort of tries to target younger people who might not have found their voice yet and who just doesn't know what's going on inside them. Um, so if, uh, if people know that there is a facility like this, then that's what this is for. With all the run-up to this event today with publicity, I've always said that this uh, is very close to my heart. So I'll tell you now, it's close to my heart because uh, when I was 17 or 18, I had uh, mental health issues. I didn't know what was going on. I turned to my parents who didn't have a clue either what was going on. Couldn't turn to me mates. Well, I did, but then I was dropped like uh, a hot brick by a lot of me mates. A few stuck by me and uh, I, was, uh, I was in turmoil. And uh, I found out in later years that uh, I'd had a breakdown, but I didn't know what was happening to me at the time. My whole life was falling apart. A long string of events. Uh, if only I'd had access to uh, a jigsaw hub back then. It is 10 past 6 in the evening and it's 27.5 degrees Celsius in Ireland or Northern Ireland <laughs> we're just over the border unbelievable now we're approaching um, one of my favorite sculptures in Ireland if I remember rightly I think they're just on this roundabout ah oh, there they are and see them over the signposts there. The nickname for this sculpture is the Tinnies uh, and as you can see it's a group of musicians, traditional musicians. The uh, sculptor is Morris Harron who's also responsible for another one of my favourites called the Gaelic Chieftain. I just love that, look at that. They just have so much energy within them. It's an incredible piece of art. Um, what I love is that at different times of year, they dress, people dress them up like at Christmas time they put Santa Claus outfits on them and, uh, and indeed in the lockdown they dress them with NHS outfits to pay tribute to the uh, healthcare workers in the lockdown. I just think they're amazing. Look at them. Still riding two by two. We've done really well today. And uh, even Ken, uh, who was the detective, he was saying uh, how impressed he was. 35 years he's been in the guards and he's thoroughly impressed with our uh, level of riding in formation. <laughs> so there's a pat on the back. I'll get in there, I think. Okay, I think for the last stop. I'm good parked here because uh, <laughs> we have enough photographs, I think, for one day of the bikes in formation. All right, last stop of the day. Jigsaw Donegal. Thanks for having us. Yeah, you got to try the helmet. And the gloves. Here you go, pal. Here, look. He's going to put the glove on his brother. Is that you on the camera? Is that you? Now look, if you point that to me, you'll see me. <laughs> see me? What about me? What about me? Look, what about him? What about him?
here at the end of day one. We're in Letterkenny, Donegal. We're at the Clanry Hotel. I've stayed here a few times actually, so I know the hotel is very good as well. So uh, something lovely to eat beckons, I think. Uh, the opportunity to chat to the lads some more because we've literally had sort of 10 minute breaks every time we've stopped at a hub just to have a bit of crack. So we, we don't even know each other yet and we've been on the road all day. So we're gonna have a great night. Um, that was a superb day for a superb cause and a superb bunch of lads. Um, Day two beckons tomorrow. Let's do it all over again. Mm -hmm.